We're driving a 2023 Honda Pilot, and this one is the Trail Sport Edition. That's the off-road version. Coming up, we're going to tell you how the Honda Pilot helped us make our way through California's recent debilitating snowstorms. But first, information explosion. The Honda Pilot is all new for 2023. It enters its fourth generation. It is a three row family SUV. Let's begin with interior. When I first got in, I was so excited about the amount of storage. Apparently, I have a lot of Yeah, <laughs> also is excited about storage, middle age life. Woo. Woo. There's this place here where I could put my phone and various toys to hand my child. Yay. There's spots for multiple <laughs> drinks. Yay! Yeah, 14 cup holders throughout the interior. The door storage is impeccable. And I'm going to quickly note, they put the door cup holders as far forward close to the hinge as possible so that when you close it, it doesn't spill. Mm. The center uh, console, big enough for um, a Kleenex thing. That space where you can set two phones side by side and we have a wireless phone charger in this one. The biggest style punch I'm getting is from this orange stitching, which you can tell I like the color. One material choice that I wish they had gone in a different direction in is there's a lot of shiny black plastic. And that is an odd choice too in the version that is the most off-road oriented because you're going to get a lot of dust in here. What I will say is that if you actually touch the knobs and push the buttons, Honda has been so attentive to the feel and the sound of those touch points. Oh, one other um, nice practical touch is they've got a little cell phone slot on the back of the front seats, which is handy. Speaking of the seats, so these are all new uh, design for 2023. They've worked hard to increase like lumbar support and thigh support. Support. Sweetie, are you feeling supported? I'm feeling so supported right now, you guys. If I were more of a cheese ball, I would use that as a gateway to talk about the mountain communities that we live in and how amazingly supportive everybody has been uh, coming together during a uh, truly terrible time where people have been snowed in and unable to get food and get medicine. But I'm not that kind of cheese ball. I will say that the seats are very comfortable. I'm uh, finding them uh, very supportive. Uh, I mean, I'd like a little more lateral support if I'm honest, but that's because I drive like an a-hole. <laughs> I'm sorry you know what that means. So we've got seven seats here in the Trail Sport, but all other trims offer up to eight seats. And there's a really cool thing that they have available on some trims, which is you can remove the middle second row seat, um, which is a very common orientation when people have family vehicles. They like to have that middle seat gone so uh, kids can walk easily between them. But if you remove that middle second seat, what do you do if you need an eighth seat? Well, it's really cool because you can put it underneath the um, cargo floor in the Honda Pilot depending on the trim. I also like the fact that uh, in every trim above the base sport trim, you can get USB ports in all three rows. So even if you're in the third row, you'll have power for your device so you can ignore your family. I'm and you don't even need a device to do that. Wow, she's ignoring at a fourth grade level. <laughs> As the quintessential five foot 10 inch American man, I find the second row to have offer plenty of space, uh, good adjustability. What I really like is the one touch slide feature that even a kid can push a button. It'll move the second row out of the way for easy access to the third row. Getting in the third row, not a problem. And once you're back there, even with kiddo seats slid all the way back, my knees cleared, uh, plenty of head clearance, and a very comfortable recline in the third row as well. This is one of the few three row SUVs that you could genuinely put adult friends in all of the rows and uh, they'll probably complain about your personality rather than their seating comfort. <laughs> I, I might be projecting. And when you're sitting in that third row, you'll be happy to know that you can still fit two roller bags behind you in the cargo area. There are 22.4 cubic feet behind the third row. You can bring people and stuff in the Honda Pilot and that underfloor cargo area is generous. And then deploying the third row seats, if you need to uh, pop them down, is so easy. There's a strap that you pull on. It has a little bit of Velcro to it. You'll want to attach that before you flop it down. Be otherwise, it's a little difficult to grab again. But it's just a single one pull, flops down, no problem. And assuming you've used the Velcro, easy pull back up. Kiddo, while you're munching on Fruit Loops, tell me, how is it getting in and out of this vehicle? 
upgrade. <laughs> One thing about getting in and out of the pilot is that there are flat spots to put your feet. And I think that helps Ingress, even though the step-in height for her is a little bit higher than would it be in some other vehicles. And what about getting a car seat installed? Super simple. The latch points are totally exposed. Oh, totally oh my. Accessible. Whoa, here comes the iguana. <laughs> Woo! Easy, if you know what I mean. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> And with that easy slide forward and back, a rear-facing child seat, that'd be no problem. As for safety, the NHTSA and the IIHS, neither of them have rated the Honda Pilot yet, but I do know from Honda's documents that they are targeting five stars from the NHTSA and a top safety pick plus from the IIHS. And I don't know if you'd put that in a presentation for journalists if you didn't plan to nail it. Standard are eight airbags, automatic emergency braking. The lane keeping assist, by the way, does a really great job of keeping the vehicle in the lane with very smooth movement. Full speed dynamic cruise control is also standard and I find the system does a really good job maintaining a reasonable distance between you and the vehicle ahead. Blind spot warning also comes standard. Family, what do we think? Is the Honda Pilot family friendly? Yeah. So family friendly. Maximally family friendly. Family. Rear window test. Hi. All the way down, woo! Armrest test, driving in a comfortable eight and four. I find easy reach to my elbows, inboard and outboard. There's some stitching along the edge here, but I don't find it excessively abrasive. There's give to both the inboard and outboard. It's kind of firm, soft, but uh, I don't find it in any way off-putting. I'm gonna go 85% inboard, 85% outboard. If you'd like to see more of these kinds of videos, plus the occasional helicopter adventure, feel free to subscribe. Style. Something about the styling of the front looks sporty to me. I'm going to use my uh, automotive expertise to explain it to you. Uh, you. The key is modern Honda design, terminating the A-pillars a little bit sooner. So what you have is this longer hood line, which projects an image of power. And then also, like uh, the previous pilot, it was kind of uh, sleeker, more aero. This here, is blocky. This is blockier, more blunt. There are a lot of elements happening here that make it feel like a little bit more punchy in the Thank you, Sensi. Do, do you like that? <laughs> hey, it's here, it's assertive, it's gonna, it's gonna punch you in the <laughs> To that, I will add that the new Honda Pilot, fourth generation that we're driving right here, is longer, it has a longer wheelbase, um, and it's also uh, got a wider track. So all of those elements make it feel more assertive. The version we're driving here is the Pilot Trail Sport. And I really like the black trim on the outside. I think that contrast adds a lot of style. I think there are more audacious three-row SUVs uh, one could buy, but overall, I think this is a nice style that will wear well over time. But what do you guys think? Do you like the look of the Honda Pilot? If so, if no, tell us in the comment section. In motion. Quick note, no matter how cloudy it is, eventually the sun will shine. And when it does, I'll be prepared with my flying eye sunglasses. They work great in a helicopter context because they're extremely light and durable. You can bend them and do that. They have incredible optical clarity with these polycarbonate scratch resistant lenses. And uh, Sweetie enjoys them too in her normal life. I'm wearing the ophthalmic line, which have the same features that you enjoy in your glasses, but also they come with these removable magnetic tinted lenses. So whether I'm outside or inside, I can enjoy Flying Eyes quality. If you're in the market for eyewear, consider Flying Eyes eyewear. You can save 10% if you use the promo code MICA. Use the link in the description below, Flying Eyes. Okay, let's see how the brakes are. Can I come to a smooth, smooth stop? Uh, actually kind of a little bit blocky, but okay, yeah, yeah, that worked, that worked okay. Also, that engine restarts very quick, very smooth. Motoring around at modest speed, the transmission is um, offering smooth shifts. And now let's uh, floor it from a stop and see what happens floored. Whee! That fuel felt pretty snappy off the line, a little bit of tire spin and uh, pulling strong. There's enough excess acceleration there that I suspect the pilot would do reasonably well if you were loaded up with um, even more gear and even more people. By the way, this road here is not good, <laughs> and I think ride quality is, is more than acceptable. Last thought, I do like the steering. Stable on center, and then as you start to come off, you get a prompt response from the chassis. Uh, I don't know if this would be my number one tool for driving thrills, but among free row SUVs, I think there's a predictability and a responsiveness that is very reassuring to SUV drivers. That's what I think, but what does Sweetie think?
Evie's at the wheel in an unusual fashion. You're backing up. Great opportunity to talk about visibility. How's it feel? I'm really grateful for this camera because I feel like I would otherwise be a little nervous to back up here. I now, don't is that the vehicle or is that just you in general? It's both. Right back there, I could see like her headrest and that's blocking the far window. And then we had a combination of slow speed maneuvers and now we're uh, kind of going around a corner here. How do you find the efforts on the steering wheel? The steering efforts are very light. It's a very comfortable way to steer. What about now? You're in sport mode. I can see how that would be more reassuring at higher speed. Yeah, yeah, a little bit more, more stable. stable. Um, you're putting more effort into it, so you're more involved, that kind of thing. I'll put you back in normal now, because you don't want any of that. So in terms of size, how do you find the Honda Pilot? When we were in the parking lot, it felt like a very large vehicle to me, but now that I'm maneuvering on the roads, it feels more manageable. I think I could drive something this size. Overall, are you comfortable driving the Honda Pilot? I am. Then I'm getting back in the driver's seat. Overall, it is such a well-rounded, competent on-road package, but the real question you're probably wondering is, how's that trail sport perform off-road? Okay, we're off-road, but in an unfamiliar place because our normal off-road areas are completely covered by snow. The Trail Sport is the most off-road capable version of the Pilot. The things that make it off-road capable, there are um, steel skid plates underneath the vehicle, Continental all-terrain tires, this Trail Watch camera system, which we've really Ooh. found to be super helpful, having a 360 cam for driving off-road when you don't have a spotter. So that's really useful, especially on an unfamiliar trail. And then we also have an off-road suspension. So the entire vehicle, it's actually more capable. In fact, you also have an extra inch of ground clearance the IVTM4 all-wheel drive system. It's a really cool all-wheel drive system that the Pilot has. It can send up to 70% of engine power to the rear tires. And then from there, it can send essentially all of that power to either the right or the left. You know, we hinted at it, but uh, we uh, live up in the mountains of California. And as you might've heard in the news, uh, we had a massive um, once in a generation blizzard up there. We happened to be driving home when that blizzard started. It almost felt like a Honda commercial as we were driving driving up the mountain through the snow past abandoned cars and there was a whole section where a bunch of cars had slid on the side of a bridge and it was just all this mayhem and the Honda Pilot was just blasting on through. It was a remarkable scene. So what we know is that IVTM4 does a really good job vectoring torque to help you get around corners and we made really great use of that in the snow. In a dirt environment, we've got some articulation moments here. Ah, oh, it's just like home. <laughs> If we get um, one tire up in the air, is it still gonna get, be able to get power to the ground? There we go, there's a tilting motion. The other thing that the Trail Sport has is something called Trail Torque Logic. If the right or left rear wheels are in the air, it'll automatically send more power to the back and direct it to the uh, tire that's on the ground to keep you moving forward. And then if it detects a front wheel is light, then it'll um, break that wheel to send power to the other side. So that Trail Torque Logic is something that's specifically made to help you get a this, this thing right here. Let's see if I can move forward. And I'm gonna use the camera. By the way, the camera button is right here on the end of the stock. And it just moves us right along. Man, it did such a good job. Yeah, it is cool to watch the camera. So the entire point of the Honda Pilot Trail Sport is not to be the gnarliest off-roader, but it's to be able to go on moderate trails. You're not gonna uh, top a Jeep Wrangler with this thing, but you will get to some places that you would never have dared in the previous Pilot. And that's where having the steel skid plates really comes in handy. Oh my God. The only reason I'm not totally panicking is it because I keep pretending we're driving a metal hot dog. <laughs> it does kind of look like a metal hot dog. <laughs> Would you drive a metal hot dog? <laughs> Tell us in the comment section. I want me, that to be the note we end on, uh, <laughs> getting back on road. In total, I'm really grateful we had the trail sports. We've had a wild week and a half getting up and getting down the hill eventually. The pilot did a great job. Moving on, we're to emotion factor. It's not flashy, but it gets the job done in a really efficient way. From like the interior storage, the styling is like 
nice, but it's not like, whoa, I'm styled. <laughs> I like to think of it as, let's say you're going on a quest. Who do you want to be your assistant? Uh, do you want somebody that's just Johnny on the spot, always there, has yes. the thing when you need it? Or do you want comic relief? I hope you want comic relief. <laughs> I, want, I like a little comic relief, but I think in this context, um, yeah, the, uh, the vehicle kind of takes care of all of those elements, so you just don't have to think about it. But also, people have an affinity for the brand, so I think that's another powerful emotional modifier. And I will say too that stylistically, this is doing a lot more for me than the previous generation did. But what do you guys think? Are you feeling emotionally drawn to buy a Honda Pilot of your very own? If so, you might need to know what your current car is worth so you can sell it, or how much you should pay for your upcoming Honda Pilot. If you'd like to know that information, click the Kelly Blue Book pricing link in the description below. Remarks. Remark number one, infotainment. There's a standard seven inch screen that comes on the sports trim, but all other trims get this nine inch screen. How do you find using it? This is like my ideal infotainment interface. There's a home button, a back button, a knob, and seek buttons, so it's very easy to find those. The icons are color-coded, so that makes it very easy to see out of the corner of your eye. One thing I do wish it had was a built-in nav system. We do happen to live in a place where you don't always have cell service, so embedded nav can be a really helpful thing. Down here, you have a thumb anchor. So you have super stable inputs, no matter how stupid the driver's driving. And the answer is pretty stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Apple CarPlay and Android Auto do come standard, but they are wireless when you move up to the nine inch screen. All right, kiddo, now it's time for you to shine. It's time for the Museo family smell test. Do you find the interior of the Honda Pilot to smell good, bad, or just okay? Keeping in mind that she hates new car smell. Kiddo, go. This. It was just okay? <laughs> okay, so that's helping Good. out. Bring your own Fruit Loops. <laughs> and that was the Museo family smell test. Sweetie? Yes. Can I give you a trim recommendation? Sure. Our trim recommendation is which trim will give you the essential features you would regret not getting, but at the lowest possible price. I'm gonna recommend the base $39,150 sport trim. It has a 10-way power heated driver's seat, four-way power passenger seat, faux leather trim, three-zone climate control, smart key access with a walk-away lock feature, plus the sport trim looks cool with black trim and 20-inch wheels. We do like having a power hatch, and that comes on the EXL trim, which also adds that larger nine-inch screen, a cabin talk feature, which allows you to scream at people in the back more easily. Good footage, sweetie. Leather and nine-speaker audio with a subwoofer, but that is a $2,800 jump, and to my mind, the Sport is just fine. The current base price is $39,000 for that Sport trim. They will be adding an LX. It's going to lose some of the Sport trim's cool aesthetics, and it will lose the heated power front seats and keyless access, but I think that's a very smart addition to the lineup because thirty-nine dollars for base price is an awful lot. All right, let's talk about engine choices. The only engine is a 3.5 liter V6, makes good power. It'll tow up to 3,500 pounds with front wheel drive and 5,000 with all wheel drive, and you can burn regular unleaded fuel. As for competitors, Kia Telluride, Nissan Pathfinder, Ford Explorer, and Toyota Highlander, just to name a few. And if you're curious what we thought about the Toyota Highlander, click that link in the upper right. Did we miss any remarks? If so, tell us in the comment section. Synopsis. In thinking about the essence of the Honda Pilot, it looks better and it is more capable in all regards. To me, it is the version of myself I envisioned when I was making my New Year's resolution of three row family SUVs. Family, I think we've done a good job reviewing the Honda Pilot. May I have a five? And a five? You. And you, come get your high five. Bam. <laughs>